So, does a pickup in the air translate to more travel worldwide? Well, we're with a man who should know. This morning saw the launch of Monocle magazine's summer newspaper aimed at holiday makers in the Mediterranean, Asia and North America. Monocle's founder and editor-in-chief, Tyler Brule, is with us. Tyler, thank you so much for joining us today. It's fascinating, actually, to see how our social habits change, how we mm. travel. We're still in the midst of a recession. There's a very grim outlook for the economy. Does it affect the choices that people make, cheaper holidays, staying at home domestically? It does. I mean, I certainly think over the probably the last few seasons, we've seen that people might sort of vote to fly with a cheaper airline, but still spend on you know, renting a great villa uh, or staying at a fantastic five-star property. But I think we're just when we're looking at the results now, I think we are seeing people migrating towards the front of the aircraft increasingly. And that's not just for business, but also for pleasure. Why? I mean, I, I know, you know, there's the famous lipstick index is sure. when actually recession is, is rife and people are sad or worried, they give themselves a bit of luxury. Is it the same kind of dynamic? I think it's that. And I think we've also reached a point in the market as well where, you know, people maybe have not been reaching into their pockets and it's just time now. And I think there has been sort of a period of austerity. I think people have seen some bright sparks on the horizon. Maybe people, some people know what their bonuses may look like at the end of the year. So they think, okay, maybe August is going to be the time for me to spend on me and you know, my friends, my family. Now, this is the summer magazine that Monaco's coming out newspaper, on. Uh, newspaper. newspaper. Mediterraneo. Mediterraneo. All right. Who exactly are, are you trying to target? Because we're seeing in, in actually luxury goods so much emergence from the emerging markets, from China. Mm -hmm. Is this only for Europeans? It's um, primarily for Europe, but it also, when you, when you reference in the intro, it will also be available um, in pockets of North America and, of course, Asia as well. So main markets. Hong Kong, Singapore, Tokyo, um, it'll also be there as well. But we really spotted um, an opportunity to really, I think, capture you know, readers' minds you know, when a lot of people go on holiday in August and to remind people, and, and particularly brands, I mean, you were talking about LVMH earlier, um, that having sort of great page real estate, it's still one of the best places to look at luxury advertising, even advertising from banks, for example. But is this to look or to spend? I mean, are you trying to you know, get people to actually go to these places? And who has the money at the moment? Is there an age group? Is there some kind of you know, professional target that you're aiming for? Well, I would say that in many ways, our target is probably the Bloomberg target. Uh, you know, the financial uh, sector is very, very important for us. I think at the same time, uh, people in the service sector, um, I think also public policy and government, these are all sort of the main areas uh, of focus for us. Um, why are we doing a newspaper at this time? Um, a variety of reasons. Our magazine comes out 10 times a year. Uh, we do a double issue during summertime, but sort of during the Fed Augusto period as well. We, think, we thought it was a time to also just re-engage with people. Um, and it's a bit of a political statement as well. It's a bit of an anti pad anti iPad device because I was I was actually in southern Italy recently watching people trying to sort of read their iPads in the sunshine and um, and watching the salt water spray and people sort of gave up very quickly and I thought you know what there's nothing that really sort of beats great newsprint still yeah you'll have to put a black cloak otherwise because exactly. of the well, sun I think that's a whole side business in fact uh, you actually started this despite people saying that you know it's it's the web that is going to do well we see a lot of newspapers in France being taken over sure. because they're not advertising is it a product that you have which is good or do you actually think that people just want to hold something in their hands? Well, we wouldn't have done it if it wouldn't have made money. And even, we don't even have to sell one copy. Um, it's been very profitable just from an advertising point of view uh, right away. And that suggested to us that I think, you know, so many people have seen a move to digital. But I think if you, if you get something of quality, if you get something of real tangible value in front of brands, they are interested. And of course, we're not naive. This has um, a very strong digital side to the newspaper as well. Not one that you read, but every Friday throughout the summer, uh, you'll be able to download a one-hour live music uh, podcast as well with a bit of political discussion in the mix. But we have a lot of newspapers, daily newspapers, actually struggling. Would you put this in, in the luxury? We had some great figures from Burberry, uh, from a lot of the watchmakers, from LVMH. Is this luxury? I, I think it's luxury. Uh, certainly that uh, we're selling it online for seven pounds. Um, it's going to be five euros when you buy it on newsstand. So certainly the positioning of it. Uh, and I think also the reader that we're talking to, it's very focused. So, I mean, literally from Beirut, you know, all the way to Marbella, that's where you're going to find it. Of course, with pockets of the Hamptons in New York and, and Europe's major hubs. But we're, there's no question uh, we're targeting a different audience. But I think that advertisers are looking for that type of focus. Aspirational. It, it, it does seem that even in, in tough times, the other LVMHs are doing good because it is aspirational. Have we changed the way we consume things over the last 15, 20 years? I think we have. Um, I think at the same time, though, we've seen that the likes of LVMH have had a tricky time in some markets. Some very advanced markets like Japan um, have also been very tricky for, for core brands like, like Louis Vuitton. 
on. So I think also it's aspirational. I think it's almost, I would say it's almost working at sort of two different speeds in certain markets. In, in some emerging markets, of course, it's very important. But I think also the likes of LVMH have to work much harder in established markets like Japan. Tyler, what is the one thing we have to do this summer? I'm seeing actually a fix for Greece. And we've been talking well, yes. so much about Greece. The economy is certainly not doing very well. Is it, you know, a cheap holiday with beautiful places? Well, and, but it's amazing. If you look at, at some of the top properties in Greece, I mean, the bookings are, I mean, really, you're talking sort of 95%. I mean, the hotels are, are full. What do we need to do? We need to start a new airline on the Mediterranean. Um, I think it, it's, it's incredible when you look at, for example, you know, OECD's, uh, OECD's statistics. Um, th th this is probably one of the, well, the most undeveloped, uh, least connected economies in the world. So we're advocating for a new Phoenicia Air airline. We need to connect the Med better. Tyler, thank you so much.